ici. Euh, C'est la « It's the last of our uh, fall uh, workshops ». We had the, we had, as you remember, we had a study day on, about the virtual exhibition. We also had uh, uh, our annual meeting and we had two wonderful uh, workshops on, uh, two were wonderful workshops. Uh, people presented their work. I found it very interesting. We were supposed to add a fourth what, uh, workshop geared specifically for heritage partners. And we have decided to postpone it uh, after uh, Christmas to give her more time. And we will know more at, at, at this time. We will have work more on the virtual exhibition. Alors, merci à tout le monde d'être là. Et je vais passer la parole à Don. Don? Uh, bonjour, everyone. So, my name is Don Lafanier. I'm a professor of geography at Michigan Tech University and lead the team here at Michigan Tech that uh, among other activities in the um, portal or among the other activities in the project uh, is to develop uh, this research portal that we're using to uh, uh, within the project. So I'm going to say a few introductory words. I typically would have helped run this workshop, but unfortunately I um, contracted COVID yesterday. And uh, so I'm, I'm not myself. So I'm going to make this quick and turn it over to my fantastic colleagues who, who I know will, um, will lead you through this, okay? Um, and, and please excuse my, my, my French isn't very good, so I'm going to do this in English. Um, so the, the portal was developed and designed with the idea of supporting a large heritage project. And so we built this thing from basically from scratch to as a way of figuring out how can we take all of these different disciplines, right? We're all coming from, from looking at heritage and history and, and, and understanding the, the, the Francophone migration from all different kinds of perspectives, right? And we all use different kinds of archival material, oral histories, ethnographies, data in all different ways. And we thought that by having one place where we can all share that information that we can find some synergies between groups that we wouldn't find any other way. Um, in addition to that, the portal, so, so the portal is really designed to allow you to uh, add your own information, regardless of what, the, for the most part, regardless of what that is, uh, and to be able to share it. Uh, you can share it just with close colleagues. You can share it, faculty and, and researchers can share it with just their students, their students with their faculty mentors. Um, um, the, uh, um, the, um, um, sorry, who's my train of thought here? Uh, this is hard. Um, uh, but also the, um, uh, but also be able to share with the world. So you can also share information. You, you can create, uh, different types of, uh, uh, you know, uh, small exhibits, for example, that you can share with people. So, um, you're going to see some of that today. Okay. on how to do all of that. Um, and so the idea really was to have a place that not only do we store our research information uh, as we're building it and doing our projects, but we also have a tool that we can use for dissemination as well, okay? Um, um, and become sort of an active home for the project. So we have the project website that, that uh, Mary Ev and, and, and folks at CX, for example, have been working very hard uh, to build. Uh, and, and this sort of supplements that website um, by having sort of all the information that everyone's contributing. So, um, and, and so what we're gonna do today um, is we're going to walk through an introduction to the, to the portal. So um, how do you get into it? Um, how do you, you know, so how do you log in? How do you find things? How do you make some basic maps? How do you share something? And, um, and then we've got some presentations by some students who have been using it over the summer so that you can get some real um, concrete examples that you can kind of build off of, okay? Um, and then at the end, um, what we'll do, there's only a handful of people who wanted anything more advanced than sort of that introductory level. So what we'll do is we'll have sort of a small break, maybe three quarters of the way through, and then those who have want to use it in a more advanced way, uh, we'll have, we'll do that part at the end, okay? 
Um, that way, those who aren't ready for that more advanced activity can can wait uh, and do it at another workshop. Um, and I will say that uh, lots of the training material you're going to see today is all on the portal, on the front page of the portal. Um, uh, Gary will show that to you in a moment, um, uh, so that you can go back and see this again. So you, and uh, uh, you don't have to rely just on what you see today. Okay. We also will have intermediate and advanced level workshops later in the year. So, okay, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. I'm going to introduce everybody real quick. Um, so Gary Spikeberg um, is in my top left. I'm not sure where he is for everybody else. Uh, but Gary's a master student in industrial heritage and archaeology here at Michigan Tech. Um, he'll be leading you through uh, the workshop along with uh, my colleague Ryan Williams, who must be here somewhere. But I don't see him on my screen. There he is. Um, uh, Ryan's the assistant director of the Geospatial Research Facility, um, which is a, a research uh, hub for geospatial work uh, here at Michigan Tech. Um, we also have Yanko uh, Kalem, right? Yanko, am I saying your last name right? Good. Uh, Yanko is uh, uh, a, a student who works with Eve uh, and, uh, and uh, Jill and a few of our other partners. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself. And Brooke uh, Batterson uh, is here as well. And she's a, uh, a bachelor's uh, in history uh, student here at Michigan Tech who works with Sarah. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Thank you all. I appreciate your understanding as I mumble through this. And uh, uh, enjoy your workshop, okay? Thank you, Don. Get well soon. Thank you. So uh, Gary or Ryan? Uh, yeah, I, I I think I can take the lead for now. Um, so next, we wanted to show off what Yenko's been doing. So before we get into the um, uh, nuts and bolts of, of how to use the portal, we want to show some of what it's capable of. So uh, if, Yenko, if you're if you're ready to start uh, showing uh, your maps. Yep, yep. Um, I'll just have to share my screen. Uh, you should be able to do that. I'll... Screen, yes. OK. There we go. Does everybody see it well enough? OK. Um, so to start, um, I'll show you the portal. Uh, so, um, so when I'm logged in, this is kind of uh, what I see. I can see all my content that I've uploaded to the portal uh, in this page. Um, and you can see the folders here. Now I can also go to my groups uh, where I've been sharing uh, all my content. It, so it's available to all the members of this uh, Prairie group here. So um, what I've been doing, uh, what I did this summer was um, taking archives from the Société Historique de Saint-Boniface and um, putting them onto this portal in a digitized format. And um, the goal was sort of to have uh, these archival documents linked to a virtual map of uh, some French communities in Manitoba. So notably, uh, Notre Dame de Lourdes is the, uh, the community that I worked the most on, as well as saint -Aubert. Um So my first step was kind of to create a, a list of all the property owners in uh, this community through the years uh, in the first uh, few decades of, of colonization there. So um, you can see the name of a certain person uh, with the lot number um, uh, that was owned by them, the year it was purchased, as well as uh, the origin of the family when it was available. Um, now, I took this information from a book uh, by Gaborio that was a study of this uh, same community. 
Uh, so this uh, list, the Excel document is available on the portal. Uh, there's a little description here that uh, explains what it is. Um, as well, I have a list of tags uh, that are subject uh, headings, sort of tags that you can see. So I would have had uh, uh, family. So the first couple that would have moved to this community uh, and then the number of generations removed from this family, the origin, uh, their names, uh, subjects, etc. So that's also available. And then you can do a search with these tags that are down here. So if I click on Notre Dame de Lourdes, it will take me to uh, all the documents that are tagged with uh, Notre Dame de Lourdes. Um, so first sort of uh, uh, priority was to find photos that would be pertinent and uh, related to these property owners uh, in the archives since there was a, a fair number of them. So here I have a folder with uh, all these photos directly accessible from there. Now, um, this is an example of a photo. Uh, you have a short description, a long description, longer description. Uh, on these photos, there have been no restrictions. However, I do mention that it's a uh, um, property of the Societe Historic. Um, you've got the tags down here and the credits uh, from where it is. You've got the call numbers so that uh, if you need the original document from the archives, it's e easily accessible from there. Uh, and this link here will bring you to the website of the Societe Historique to show this document. So I did the same thing with correspondence. Um, there's a an example of a letter here. Uh, donc les signataires sont en désaccord avec l'emplacement prévu par le curé pour une église. So it's a little description of the letter of what the preoccupations of these uh, of these residents were. So you have a copy of the digitized um, document here. Uh, I also did a folder of um, of uh, the newspapers that were uh, mentioning this community. So for example, here, there's a little excerpt just to get an, uh, an idea of it, is, um, is the developments of this parish. Uh, so you can click on this as well uh, and have the document uh, available online and uh, Another uh, interesting sort of document was uh, audio recordings. So there's, uh, what I did is took little excerpts from recordings that were interviews with descendants of the original um, inhabitants of this community. And uh, so if we go to one of these, you have the audio sample here that can be downloaded. It's only a few minutes long with a description of what they talk about in this, in this interview. And then for the full recording, you can go to the link here below uh, that will show the call number and uh, a way to access the full recording. Um, I also did a sort of uh, um, an overview of the schools that were there present in the early days of the community. So I've got photos, correspondence, uh, things like this. Um, <clears throat> it's not letting me click the next tab. Okay. Uh, so this is an example of a school document. It's a uh, uh, data set. The, um, the uh, accounting for for the school construction uh, back in 1913, I believe, when it was made. 
Uh, so it gives you an idea of materials, costs, uh, et cetera. Um, so the next uh, step was to make layers that were map layers um, to be able to link all this data. Uh, so here I have a folder with all the layers possible uh, that I used in the final maps. Um, so if you go to one of those, it's a digitized historical map of one of the uh, one, one part of the community. Uh, so you can see the description of the document here and the link as with others. Uh, if you click on it, you can see the digitized document itself uh, as it's presented on, on a map. Now, this was uh, done through ArcGIS Pro. Uh, Gary, you can correct me if I'm saying the, the name wrong, uh, but it's essentially taking these maps and linking them to uh, the actual sort of Google Maps um, of the area. So you can superimpose a historical map on the current contemporary map and see how it is related to the current, um, the current uh, area. So this folder, final folder here is uh, a folder containing all the maps, the, uh, the layers that have been uh, combined with different layers with uh, different information with different links. So there's uh, a whole list of them here. If we go to one, this is the example for the schools. So this is a map containing the schools in relation to, uh, to the village, to the community. So you've got maps, uh, historical maps of the area. And uh, these map notes that are, are a different layer that's, uh, that I created from through the, through the portal, uh, you can add little tags and notes and uh, things like this. So here it would tell me which school district this is uh, and the names of the schools that were in this district. These pins uh, will show the school itself. And um, in the case where there's a document linked to it, there's a link that would take you to the document in, uh, in the portal. So here we have a list of, of uh, teachers, uh, of uh, districts, sorry. Oops. Uh, did I lose the share there? Sorry. Uh, do you guys see my screen? We do not. I'll try that again. Is that better? Yeah. Good, thanks. Um, so this map here shows all the property owners of Notre Dame de Lourdes, and it has these township maps that are historical map layers uh, underneath to show um, to show how it was mapped in this time when uh, when the colonization was in its first stages. So you can deselect any amount of maps, uh, any amount of layers, uh, select, deselect. So if we go to one of these squares, it will tell me who property owners were. So we, here we have the Canadian Pacific Railway, which was a large property owner in the area, and uh, the families. So you have Joseph Comte, uh, and it tells me the family origins when it was possible to include these. <clears throat> if we go back to, oops. To, uh, 
to these maps here, <clears throat> this one, for example, uh, contains all the property owners who purchased or obtained their property between 1900 and 1909 on this particular township range uh, section. So if you click on these pins, uh, you've got the links to historical documents that are uh, related to these families. So for example, here we click on it and it'll bring us to a photo, uh, a wedding photo um, with members of this family present in the photo. I stopped it again, didn't I? Is that okay now? Yep. Okay, so after I did this for um, uh, Notre Dame de Lourdes, I started on the same sort of uh, path with Saint Um Now, Notre Dame de Lourdes had the advantage of the uh, book with all the uh, listed property owners. Uh, Saint Albert, it wasn't the same story. So I was going through archival documents looking for correspondence or um, uh, deeds that were showing who property owners in this area were. Um, so this is a smaller fo folder. It has, uh, unlike Notre Dame de Lourdes, everything for Saint Albert is in, in a single folder. Uh, and you've got images, uh, you've got uh, PDFs as well. So if we go to this document, uh, it's the list of the property owners as well. Um, so you can see the names of the people or the, or, uh, the organization, uh, the document, which type of document it was. So it might've been a government uh, grant for, for land grant, could have been a, a deed uh, of sale, a deed of purchase. Um, and then the link to uh, the call number rather is here in this uh, in this uh, column. So that gives you a, a good overview of the documents you can find in the portal. Uh, same thing with the tags. Uh, again, they're below down here. So this is an example of a document in the Saint Albert folder. You've got a photo that you can click on and view and download. So this is all a, a digitized um, document from the archives. Here's another one. This is uh, one of the property owners, the uh, Monseigneur Tachy. Um, so this here is the uh, complete uh, map of, of Saint Albert. So here we have a number of uh, historical maps that are layered, as well as the notes, the, the notes layer. So these show pieces of land, lots that were owned by certain people. So if you click on this link here, uh, it will bring you to the document that, um, that allows us to, to determine that this was belonging to uh, to this person. And then the pins again are links to documents such as photos. Okay. And this is the group uh, that I've shown you. And uh, this is all my content here. So, um, I think that's all I have to show you. That's what I've been doing this summer. Uh, if there are any questions, if there are any questions, n'hésitez pas. Yanko, pour le pour le bénéfice de nos collègues, que moi, moi euh, je vais te poser la même question que je suis posée quand tu as fait une présentation à la fin de l'été euh, au groupe de la prairie. Combien de temps euh, combien de temps ça t'a pris euh, à être euh, pour être à l'aise euh, avec euh, 
avec le portail. And I will repeat it in English. How much time did it take you to, uh, to find your way around the portal and be uh, efficient with it? Donc, uh, les premières étapes, ça, ça m'a pris peut-être deux semaines, about two weeks for the first steps. Et puis, um, pour être vraiment très à l'aise, peut-être un mois, parce que ça comprenait aussi le programme ArcGIS. Uh, donc, uh, so, so in English, that's uh, about a month to be uh, really solidly comfortable with it. Uh, and because it also included the ArcGIS program that Gary trained me in. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions ou c'est bien? OK. So, merci. Thank you all. Uh, Gary? Thank you very much, Janko. I, I know uh, for me, it was really uh, gratifying to see all of the all the things you were publishing popping up every uh, few days and seeing it really uh, start to populate the portal. Um, uh, so I want to shift attention a little bit over to. Uh, so in the chat, I'm posting a link to our landing page for the portal. So if you were sharing this with uh, colleagues outside of the project or uh, family members that you wanted to show some things off to or, or that kind of thing. Uh, we have a, a website here. Uh, if you can, you can just copy and paste that into your browser. I'm going to start sharing my screen. If you, you don't necessarily have to go there because I'm going to be uh, showing you. So here we go. Okay, everyone should be able to see this. Okay. So this is sort of our our uh, our landing page to show people what's going on in the portal right now. So as you can see, uh, we've featured uh, Brooke's story map that she will uh, show you guys later, and you will have already seen parts of if you watched the recording or attended the uh, meeting last week. Uh, you have you can see some of Yanko's maps in here, um, along with some other data. Uh, I've also posted some of the recordings from the the previous workshops. Uh, we have our training data, so these are from the earlier workshops we've done. So from when we all met in Montreal over a year ago now, <laughs> feels like longer. I don't I don't know about all of you. Um, uh, as well as some extra things, but like adding uh, audio and and video files to the portal, um, and we're we're sort of adding to that as people have questions about what's happening and what they need to accomplish. Uh, we have some recordings. So uh, as Yanko mentioned, I was I was showing him and Brooke how to uh, georeference their maps in ArcGIS Pro. So we recorded that and uploaded that here, uh, as well as the webinar that we did in the spring. Um, and then we also have uh, some pages set up for each group to sort of sh uh, show off some data that they want to or that they have or they want to show. And and this I kind of set up as with the intent that as people are, are pu uh, publishing their own uh, their own work and their own things that they want to share, uh, that this is a space they can use to show it off. So for instance, we have the the Great Lakes group. So this is where we are, um, uh, we we have uh, some of the maps that we've been putting up. Uh, this is what I used in the demo. Uh, we have some maps Brooke has been working on, uh, and then some of the the t maps from the QNA Time Traveler that um, is uh, another project that our, our research lab is running, um, and that we're using maps from in in our data that you'll see um, at various points in this. Um, but yeah, this is just sort of a way to show um, what everyone's up to in the portal. And we have a, a visual representation of that at the, at the bottom. 
showing the rough locations of where all of our different layers are hosted. Um, so this is sort of the geographic extent. Um, uh, and that that will be up that updates as people upload data that that is is spatial. So if you were to upload um, more maps somewhere, they would show up on there. And from here, let's get into logging into the portal. I'm going to post. So uh, most of you who signed up early should have gotten some information from me about uh, how to log into the portal. And where did the chat go? There we go. As well as uh, sort of a, a note to, to make sure you log in before. but. We have a lot more people with us now, so if you uh, got that email from me, go ahead and, and log into your own account. Uh, if not, and if you haven't logged into an account or you got uh, any sort of email saying, um, uh, like I know I emailed uh, William uh, just before this. Um, I have information for training accounts to log into in the chat right now. So. You, you'll see the, the URL for the website, and then we have um, the username and password. So the, the top one is set up in English. The bottom one is set up in French. So if you prefer to use French, go ahead and sign into the bottom username there. Um, to log in, we have, actually, I should probably post this link as well. So if you haven't been to the actual uh, portal side of it, other than the website, you can get to it from the website as well. Uh, there should be this in the top corner. Uh, or if you just click on any of the, the different data sources, that'll take you to the portal. It'll be focused on that, but, but let's, go, let's go from here. OK, I'm going to go back to the home. OK, so from here, I'm going to sign out of mine to show you how to sign in. If you haven't uh, done so already, so you're just going to click here. Uh, you put in your username and password. It's pretty uh, similar to any other place that you've logged in before. And from here, we're going to jump into uh, how to make like a, a sort of basic web map. So not quite as in depth as uh, everything Anko has been doing, but this will be, this is a good start on, on how to get a map made. So we're going to look at how you can add different data, data sets to it. So we have some stuff already in the portal um, as well as how you can uh, find stuff from outside the portal. That's one of the, the really powerful things about uh, using the, uh, the Esri, um, the portal software is that it connects to things like ArcGIS online. So if you know of other data sets from outside of the project that you want to use, you can really easily bring those in. Uh, as, long as, as long as the projects that are working on those have shared them publicly, uh, you, can, you can use it in the portal. Um, so in order to get started, I just want to make sure, is, is anyone having problems logging in or uh, or anything, any sort of difficulties like that. Or uh, just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. I... It doesn't. I don't see anyone with any concerns. So, okay. So, in order to start making a map. Uh, we're going to look at the, the top bar here, and it's it's really simple. You can just click Map, and it should take you to a blank map. Or if you have, you're have you working on a map in your previous session, uh, it sh can take you to that as well. But if you haven't, uh, it'll just take you to a blank map, uh, just looking at uh, the world. So what we're going to do is decide, well, I don't really like the look of this map. I want to see satellite imagery. Uh, so we're going to go over to this, this base map section. We're going to click on imagery. Actually, I kind of want to see labels of where we're at so we know. 
So let's click imagery with labels. So we have our, our imagery, got our labels. Uh, so that lets us sort of see a different view from just the, the topographic map or uh, any of that. So uh, we're going to run through. This is uh, the the same demo we ran for the Montreal meeting. So some of you may have seen this before. And if you want to uh, follow along, feel free. If you, if you want to go ahead because you remember it, that's great. Um, but we're going we're gonna to click in the search bar. And we're going to look for UCOM. And that should bring us right to the university. So this is in Montreal. Uh, so you can you can scroll in and out just using the mouse wheel. Uh, it's it's very similar navigation to Google Maps. So uh, if you if you're already familiar with that, you you should have a relatively easy time using this. And if not, it's uh, it, in and of itself is relatively user friendly. So uh, just play around. You're not going to break anything. It's it's okay. <laughs> um, Next, we're going to add some historical data. So I'm going to go to Add, and we're going to search for layers. So this is this is looking for data in all of my content, but I don't want to look in my content. I want to look in my groups. So let's look for we have some fire insurance plans uh, from Montreal from 1912. So we're going to look for Montreal. OK, so here's a bunch of data we have from Montreal. OK, we have fire insurance plans right up at the top. We're going to click the little plus sign. It's going to add those. It's going to take a second to come up. There we go. Uh, if you want to see some more detail on any of these items, you can just click on them. And it'll show you the description, um, where they come from, all of that. So we can. Zoom in and out, look around. Uh, but but let's let's add some more data. Um, from here, we're also going to add the lot shape file. So so we have some other data in here. We have building footprints. We have uh, an atlas, a contoured plan. But let's look at the lots for 1912. That should go pretty well with this map. OK. And now we're also going to look at, uh, I mentioned before you could add data from outside of the portal. Uh, this is a uh, this is going to be a, a demo data set. But I published it uh, on ArcGIS Online as an, as an example to show you how to, how to do this. So uh, up at the top at that drop down menu that was originally on my content. We changed it to groups. Now we're going to look at ArcGIS Online. And we're going to search for uh, Shirk Training, all one word. And we have the 1917 Montreal Institutions layer. So we're going to add that as well. So that's going to show with a lot of the important institutions in Montreal. Uh, it's from a different year, but that's OK. It's, it's relatively close. Um, many of you have some experience working with historical maps, so you know that uh, it's, uh, there, there's definitely an aspect of, of close enough with historical maps and, and, and their years. Um, so this is, this is great, but I, I, think, I think we can do better than just this. Let's. Let's sort of change the the way all of this looks so it, it looks better. Like all of these lots, we can't really see a lot of the buildings from the fire insurance plans. Uh, I think I think we can do better. So we're going to look at changing the symbology of the layers that we have on here. So this is sort of how to how to take your map and and give it that extra level of uh, refinement to make it look look a little a little better. So we're going to look at all of the content on our map here. So we have our institutions, our lots, and our fire insurance plans. Um, and we're going to hover over the Montreal lots layer until we see this little symbol here. 
Um, this is going to let you change the layer style. So this is the this is the map symbology for any of you who have uh, GIS experience already. Uh, we are going to leave it so that it's just showing the location because these are polygons that might do something different if you're looking at um, points or other types of data. Uh, we're going to change our symbols. So we're going to be able to click uh, colors so you can change the color to anything you want, um, at least from this list. But since we want to see the stuff underneath it, we're going to change the fill of that shape to have no color. So that way, you, you only see the outline of it. And then we go to the outline. I'm going to make it, let's say, red. Uh, and then uh, half a pixel is pretty small. So let's make that let's make that one pixel. And then we're going to click OK. There we go. And then we also have to make sure to click OK and done for it to save the changes. So now we have to where we can actually see the all of the different buildings underneath. We can see our institutions here, and we can see our, our fire insurance plans. Um, but we have these institutions and, and some of the layers. So the, um, the our base map shows us what some of them are, but we might not see what all of them are. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and create a label for the institutions layer? So if you hover underneath it, you'll see these three dots. Uh, we're going to click on those, and we're going to go down to Create Labels. I'm just going to grab a drink real quick. So we have our institution name. It defaulted to that field. You might that might not always happen. So if you're if you're bringing in a different layer, it you might need to look to find the right field that you want. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, but it can be a little hard to read. So we're going to add a halo effect underneath of it. So that adds a little extra contrast so that we can see the text better. So you can see here that that really makes those pop. So you can tell what those are now. And it's, it's that simple. We're just, you got to make sure that the, the label features is checked. And we're going to click OK. So there we have, we have our map. We have our labels. So we have this nice this nice map showing Montreal with its lots uh, as it was in 19 mostly in 1912 with some institutions uh, so you can you can click on these lots and see all the data that's in those but you might have a different layer that you want to use that has more descriptive information um, and you can also in a later tutorial we're going to show you how to how to tailor these these pop-ups on these to show more of what you want or what, or remove information that you maybe don't want people to see or that might not be relevant to them. Uh, but that'll be in a, in a later uh, tutorial. So what we're gonna do now, actually, uh, before, I, before I move on, is, is everyone okay on this? Do, does anyone need me to repeat something? go back and, and show how to label something or any of the symbology changes like that. OK, I think I think we're good to move on then. So I'm going to I'm going to save this. We're going to save it as our workshop. Our workshop map. Uh, uh, you all don't really need to save yours, but if you if you want to, if you want to maybe go back and explore it later, go ahead. Um, or and if you don't, don't bother saving it. It's it's fine. Um, there's actually already a copy of this in uh, the resources account, so if you want to go back and look at it, you can you can do that there. But if you're working on your own account, and you want to save it. Go ahead. So you need to add a so whenever you're saving anything in the portal, you need to have a title. You need to have tags and you need to have a, a summary. Um, and then and then a location of where it's being saved. So our tags, as you saw from Yanko's uh, 
description, those are kind of however you want to organize your content. You can you can create tags to be whatever whatever you want, whatever you think is going to work best with all of the content you're uploading to the portal. So, for instance, if you if you followed my uh, presentation in the or my section of the presentation in, in last Friday's workshop, I'm working with census data a lot. So a lot of my tags are, are t tailored to uh, locating different years of the census and and that kind of thing. Uh, but for this one, this is going to be our, our demo um, for our webinar. Uh, and it's uh, it takes place in Montreal. So here we go. And then for our summary, we're going to say um, this is our, our map uh, showing how to, to create basic maps. So we're just going to save it. And we're kind of done, but not quite. There's one more step that we that we really want to make sure we go over, and that's sharing our content. So if you want to share it with everyone on the portal, you just click everyone. So when you actually when you click everyone, it that shares it um, so that anyone without even if they don't have a login for the portal, they can see it when they look, go to the website. Uh, but if you just click the um, the data portal that means that only people who can log into the portal can see this, and if you want to be if you're working on something that's maybe a little sensitive, you can limit it to only sharing with specific groups in the portal. Uh, now there there is a, a small caveat with that, in that some of the groups are set up so that you you don't see it in this screen, but I'll I'll show you how to get to that. For instance, you don't see the Great Lakes group popping up here. But there's there's another way to uh, to do that. So from here, you can also send a link to someone. So if you want to post it on Facebook or Twitter, or just email a link to your colleague showing the, the extent of the map, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can also embed it in a website or create a web app, which we will get to uh, at the at the end of this. We'll we'll get into some basic web apps. Um, so we're going to share that. We're going to click Done. Uh, and then to, to share it with other groups, we're going to go back to my content. OK, we're going to go to our webinars folder. Folder. We have our workshop map. So I need to, to click the, the box there to select it. And so I'm going to share it from here. So you have to click under the Access and Update Capabilities. So. The reason this is like this is for, for the Great Lakes group, we decided that we wanted uh, members of our group to not only be able to see what other people were doing, but to be able to work on it as well, because we have a very collaborative environment in our lab. Um, if I wanted to make sure Brooke could edit this map as well, I would click, uh, I would need to click this um, so that, so she could see it as well. Um, so that's that's why our groups are set up that way. Um, from there, you should be able to see it. Uh, I'm going to click on groups. We're going to go to Great Lakes. And and some of you won't be able to see all of the groups because you're you're not members of them. Uh, but we also have groups set up for showing off things to the whole the whole portal so so that everyone can see them. Uh, so here you can see the workshop map right there, a bunch of Brooks information. Uh, so there's there's that there. OK. Gary, that... I, have a, I have a question. OK. Um, can you say a few words about the preliminary work you did on to, to add those layers. So what kind of work did you do to make them fit, to make them, to, to, to be able to, to, to put them one after the other one for Montreal? Uh, so, so for that, a lot of this uh, preliminary data that we have in here, so like for Montreal, for instance, um, this we pulled from other projects. Uh, from a, a lot of projects that many of you are working on, um, it's already publicly hosted. So all we did was we pulled um, 
the the link to that from where where you all are hosting it. And I, I forget where this these particular maps came from. We added them last summer. Um, but we just pulled the endpoint off of that. And so it's being served from there. And this is sort of a, a, a redirected link to that. OK, so um, it's, it's kind of very easy to uh, georeference them, to geocode them. So we actually, we didn't do any of the, the geocoding on these ones, but for so are, you mean like how we got Yanko's maps in, uh, like how we geocoded those? Yeah, but it, I want I want to know if I want to add layers to the portal, for example, for another area, how does this work? Ah, okay. So in order to add, so if you wanted to publish your own maps to here, uh, you would go to your content, uh, as long as, so if you already have it geo-referenced, uh, you can uh, upload it from, there's there's a couple of different ways to do this. You can add it through through this but way. I, I don't want you to get through the details, but I, I just want you to say a few words because there's there's this preliminary, pre, preliminary work that is uh, necessary to, to get through these maps. So you show this example from Montreal because all those layers are already available. Right. Or there might be some other areas for which there are right now no layers so that we will have to start from scratch. So. Right. Okay. I, I, think, I think I understand what you're asking now. Um, so to, to get these maps you have to you have to take the actual uh map from the archives you have to uh tell the program where it needs to be on the on the surface of the earth and then a lot of these um at least for instance in in the time traveler we have a, a similar set of uh building so these um these buildings those are are traced out as as a polygon layer they're traced around the buildings on the map um so that's all that's all created and you can you can do that on this portal so you can create layers of polygons and trace out buildings so you can uh then so you can then use it in this way and that works for the the lots as well uh we also have a couple of different types of of data that you can add so if you wanted just so if you remember from uh yanko's section of this he had all those those pins so you can have points of data uh, with with any of your your different uh, like data types of data that you want to add to them, um, you can also have just lines. So if, for instance, you were uh, doing you were tracing out roads or um, or shoreline for for to trace out like where where docks were or something like that, uh, you could you could create data uh, based on that map uh to then use so you can create all of that data in the portal or you can pull it from other places okay thank you and next i think i'm going to hand it over to ryan to show how to find data within the portal yes thank you gary Okay, so uh, Gary had showed you um, how to build a web map with the data that we've we've already got in the portal and connected to it. Um, and you can find data using the, the site that we had looked at right when, when Gary first started. Uh, but if you wanted to search a little more deeper and explore in the portal itself, I'm going to give a little bit of explanation on how to do that. Um, and Yanko did a great job of really going through this for us, so he's made this much easier. Um, but here I'm, I'm logged into our portal here at the home page. To look at content on the portal, I click the content tab at the top. And for me, and I think for most of you, it'll default to showing my content. So this is the content of the user that you're logged in as that, that you've created or added to the portal. Um, in here, we can look at the results a little differently. So on the top right hand here, we have some options on how to view the items. So right now it comes in as a table. 
I can view it as a list with some details and a small thumbnail. Or I can look at it in a grid format with a nice big thumbnail to show off those items more easily. We also have the ability to sort items differently. So right now it, it sorts by the date modified, but I could sort by title instead if I'd like to. And there's also a filters button. And so filter by default is turned on. If you click it, it turns them off, but they appear on the left-hand side here. You can filter by many different things. Uh, you can filter by item types. So if I just wanted to look at maps, I could do that. If I just wanted to look at maps tagged with a certain tag, I can filter by that as well. And you can always clear the filters at the top by clicking the clear filters button. You can also search at the top here. Usually underneath this blue bar, there's always a search box there. And I like to search not just my, my, not just my content, but all the content for our organization. So if I click my organization, this then shows all the content that we have loaded in the Voyager portal. And using the search right underneath content here, I can type in a keyword or a tag or part of a title. Uh, I think it'll even search in some of the metadata. So here, if you search on Fernet, it finds some results here. If you click on the thumbnail for the item, it'll open it. And if you click on the title, or down here by these dots, you can look at the item details. And so this is what Yanko was showing us earlier. All these item details, it gives you a detailed description, any terms of use, tags, credits, things like that. And when you, when you add items to the portal, this is part of what that practice is. You're, you're adding all this content for it. Uh, and here you've got an option to open the item so you can open it. Here, this is a PDF, so it just opened right up in my browser. To get back to the portal from looking at something like a PDF, you just use the back button. So if I wanted to search for different content, um, Yanko had also showed us the, the My Groups content. So we've got My Content, My Organization, Groups, and then Favorites if you've added any of those. So looking at my groups, you have the same item type filters, the same tags, you could search by text. You can also search through any groups that you're a member of. So if I scroll down to training resources, this is a list of all those resources. And again, I can look at them in a different view. And for this example, I wanna take the picture of the Basilica in Notre Dame and download it. So we can see it here already, but if it was kind of hard to find, well, I could filter by files of images. So you can click directly on an image to download it. You can also go into that item details, learn more about it and download the item. So for a picture, when you download it, it just opens the image. And you, this would be the same thing if you had a photo of a document or something like that, that we saw earlier and you can choose to save the image as. So here I, I've saved it. For the practice of training, I put my name at the end of the file name because if we all uploaded the same file with the same name, it would get confusing and it may not even upload it twice. So for training, you wanna do that, Hit save. Again, you can use that back button to get back to the portal. that way. I'm trying to see if there are other items I wanted to cover in the sharing and the finding and downloading. Uh, another, another common thing you would download, so that's downloading an image. We might also want to download spatial data. So spatial data is a little different than just an image. So here I'm looking in my training resources group at the layers. And here's a layer about 
the census for Keweenaw County, Michigan in 1920. So I can look at these item details. I could add this to a web map um, similar to what Yanko and Gary have done. But if you wanted to work on it on your own computer offline with your own copy, you can choose to export data. So for this layer, there's multiple choices of what to export it as. It could be a shape file, Excel. I'm gonna choose an FGDB, which stands for File Geodatabase. So if you use ArcGIS Pro or newer ArcGIS Desktop, File Geodatabases are the, the new version of a shape file and it's the recommended format that's out there now. So if I choose to do that, it's gonna create a copy of this on the portal for me to download. So I'll name it something that I'll recognize. And give it a tag, which is usually required to help me find it later. And then also if I had other people that I wanted to share this with, they could find it this way too. So I can choose to export. And depending on the size of the layer, it may take longer or shorter for it to finish this export for us. So when it exports it success successfully, it moves us right to it and I could choose to download it to my computer. This particular type comes to us in a zip format and I could save it and then I could add that into the desktop GIS or other software there. If I went back to the content, in my content, there is that file geodatabase there that we just created for a download. So that's one quick way to be able to download items and content off of the portal um, and work with it on your own computer or to share it outside of there. So I think from there, I'll hand it back to Gary and let him tell us about adding items. Yes. Uh, Do you have any questions about that immediately? Great. Okay. Uh, hang on, I'm just getting. Something added real quick. Okay. So while Gary's working on that, I'll just talk. Uh, so one of the things that we, uh, that's important to where you're searching here is like Yanko showed you and Gary showed you and we saw in the item details, it's, it's really important that you add things like tags, um, that you share them to the appropriate groups so that, so that your, your other uh, group members are able to find the data and the items easily. If you, if you don't do things like that, then it's a little tougher to find that content. You've, you've got to search just by the name of the title. So um, sharing is important. That's what makes it work easily across the whole group. Uh, thank you, Ryan. So I want to go and, and show you how to upload a couple of different kinds of data and I need to share my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my content. So to start adding something, you're gonna to go to the add item. So you're looking at from your computer. Uh, so this is if you're adding your own, your own sort of data, but if you wanted to do, so like the, uh, the data I mentioned before, so like the, the maps from other projects uh, that, are already, that are already published, you can do that through uh, through the web. So if you're, you're looking at other sort of web services, you can just enter the URL here, fill in your, your title and tags, uh, and, then, and then it will just add a link to it. 
Um, so that that data isn't being hosted on Voyager, but it, it's basically creating a um, a permanent link to it on on the portal. Now, for adding data from your computer, I'm going to look at. Uh, let's go. So to add some spatial data, this is the the uh, extract that Ryan made just a few minutes ago. So it thinks it's a shape file. This is actually a file geodatabase. So this is it. Just oops. it's a so it's a zip file now. So if you're if you have your own data that you're using uh, through uh, your your projects, you're going to want to export it as either a shapefile or a file geodatabase. Uh, you're going to want to uh, compress it into a zip file and then uh, start uploading it to the portal. So you have your, your file geodatabase. And you, you want to, if you um, just want to put, put it up there to share so that other people can download it, you don't have to make it into a hosted layer. But if you want to upload it to use it for yourself, you're going to want to publish it as a hosted layer. Now, there are, there are other ways to do this. Um, for some of you who are interested in connecting to, ArcG or to Portal for ArcGIS, uh, which we have, we have some information on how to do, and, and we can show you that. Um, sorry, not Portal for ArcGIS, for um, uh, uh, I'm blanking on the name of the program. ArcGIS Pro. ArcGIS Pro, yes. <laughs> Uh, ArcGIS Pro and even ArcGIS Desktop, but um, Portal is really, it's really made to work with ArcGIS Pro, uh, which I know not everyone necessarily has access to those programs, but for those of you who do, it, it makes it much easier to interact with. Um, so you could, for instance, just share it right from your, your uh, project that you're working on. Um, but I'm just going to show you how to, how to upload this from as, as a file geodatabase that's been compressed. So we're going to add our tags. This is our, our shirt training. You probably want to change the title too, Gary. Um, probably. Um, so what, what the reason for that is it doesn't, the, the portal doesn't let you have uh, multiple instances of the same type of data on a single user. So I probably don't need to change the name, but it's good practice. So because it was on Ryan's account before and now it's being on mine, it's it's fine, but we're gonna change it just to be just to be sure. This is just data management practices uh, to sort of keep everything organized and, and in a way that it's not gonna potentially interfere with other people. So it's gonna take a little bit to upload. So it's going to take us, uh, in the meantime, to to its creating it. So it's going to for for feature services. It takes a little bit to unpack it and and sort of create the service. But while we're doing that, we can add our summary. Or while it's doing that, we can add our, our summary of uh, this is a, uh, a test for training purposes. Um, uh, we have some census data. This. Uh, and then as far as any terms of use, uh, that is sort of determined by, by whatever data you're uploading. And then we're going to make sure to acknowledge that this data came from Ryan Williams export. Uh, and and uh, if you're doing, if you're uh, pulling data from, from a more uh, profession in a more professional way, then then definitely that would be reflected here. But just for the the purposes of this, I just want to make sure that I get every just check all the boxes, make sure everyone's getting credit where they need it, uh, and then we're going to open 
our data. Okay, and here you, you can see we've added a bunch of points. Uh, I'm not gonna get into to creating that right now, but uh, you can just see uh, that it's there. We can re-symbolize it later. Um, but uh, the thumbnail is not anything, it, it doesn't really show anything. So how do we wanna change that? So we're going to uh, open the map to select a new thumbnail. Um, now, because I already have that map open from earlier, it's saying, if you do this, you're going to lose any changes that you haven't saved. And yeah, we're going to, we're going to open that. And there we go. Done. We're going to, we're going to save this. Uh, no, we're not because that's going to make a map. Um, so we're just going to go back to our content. Okay. So next, we don't want to we don't want to upload any more uh, uh, spatial layers. Let's let's look at how we would upload, say, a picture, for instance. So uh, I'm going to look at more from my computer. We're going to go, and I downloaded that picture earlier. So we have the the. No, uh, Basilica de Notre Dame from Montreal. So we're going to open that. So let's, we maybe don't need all of this information about how big it, the image is. Um, and maybe we take the date and I, I didn't delete that. I actually cut it to add later. So we're going to add that in the description. Um, So we're going to add, oh, I got to add my tags, see? So it the portal does a good job of, of helping you make sure that you're getting uh, at least the bare minimum of things. Oop, we want trains, we want training, and we want, okay. So we're uploading our image. Uh, we're going to add, our date in summary, uh, photo there. Save that, and then I I, I think we have the the idea the idea of uh, adding the rest of our, our metadata down. Uh, and and just to show, when you click on the download, it takes you to the image. So if you copy the image location, you can use that to embed in other places. So that's, if you, instead of saving the image, you go to copy image location that you can then use to, to show it other places. So that's where it is as it's being hosted on the, on the portal. And I think that's, uh, well, I'm going to talk about um, as well as the, the different types of things that you can upload to the portal. So you can add, for instance, let's go to my research data in the Q&A. We have some feature layers. So these are these are um, shape files, essentially. Uh, we have an Excel file here. So this is a, a sample of French Canadians from the, the US Census. We have some PDFs. These are enumeration district descriptions that I pulled from the Michigan Tech archives. Uh, you saw a bunch of different uh, types of files that Yanko had as well. So we have some Word files, uh, some images, and some more shape files. So you can also add, as, as Yanko sh showed you earlier, so for photos and video, or not photos, for um, sound files like MP3s and, and videos. Uh, the current version of Portal doesn't support hosting those, but we have some additional training material on how to upload them. And, and essentially how that works is you'll uh, upload it as a zip file uh, and you save it as a code sample, which doesn't it doesn't actually um, 
it doesn't actually like run anything. It just saves it as a zip file there that you can then distribute so that other people can download it and view it. Um, that That is sort of a limitation right now that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, but I believe that Esri is planning to implement some more things on that in, in future installations of Portal. And since he hasn't, oh. No, I think you're right there. Yep. Um, so does anyone uh, have any questions about how that works or any other questions about how to add data? OK. So next on here, we have, uh, I think we're going to take a few minutes for a break. Probably let's keep it to 10 minutes. Does that sound good for everyone? And then when we come back, Brooke is going to talk about her story map and the Gregoire family. Okay, I think it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, it looks like there might still be a few people coming back. I uh, just want to make sure, uh, Brooke, are you ready to get started? Yep. Okay. So if you, if you want to get ready for that, we'll give people a couple more minutes to come back, though. Gary? Yeah. Do you think we would have the time for the more advanced uh, the more advanced uh, training? It's already 3.30. Maybe you should ask the those who want that if they want to, uh, when it's time to ask. It would be after Brooke's, Brooke's presentation. Uh, yeah. So that, I, I, don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't want uh, Brooke to to uh, to 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 speed because of that because I think it's important to see what we're going to see so we can see where we are after uh, after she's done and we can decide what to do. Okay. I think Brooke was planning to go over a, a few of the things I was going to go over as well. So mm. so we won't we won't miss uh, a whole lot. Okay. All right, we're just going to look. OK, Brooke, I think if you want to get started. I th all right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. But um, you're all so good at uh, showing people how to do stuff. You haven't left me with too much, really. Um, what I'm really going to focus on, I guess, now is um, really honing in on how to do a story map or how I made mine. Um, I, I'm going like step by step because I'm one of those people that really needs a step by step, like click here type of instruction. So I'm starting off on uh, the face of the portal. It's where you're going to find 
uh, my story map on Joseph Gregoire and Gregoryville. And uh, you click use the data. It's gonna take you to my story map right here. Um, I already clicked an edit, button, an edit button that I can see because instead of just going in and looking at it, which you can all do yourself, I'm actually gonna get into the story map. Um, on the left side, you're gonna see the text. On the right side, you're gonna see um, what they call the main stage. I'm gonna get into all this. But um, we've all seen this before if you were at the last training session. Um, in your story map, you can have a lot of cool historical images. And I would just like to preface all this by saying all of the data and the information that I put in my story map is in the portal. That's how um, I put it in the story map. Um, you can use information from your own computer to upload into your story map, but you can also take from portal. And I just wanted to put everything in portal so people can see. Um, but really I'm tracing their migration um, from Canada all the way to the Cumana where I am and everyone here at Michigan Tech. Um, so here I am, I did a pop-up in the main stage. Um, you're gonna be able to do pop-ups right here. You can do a custom configuration and you can put your pop-up anywhere you want. Um, you're gonna see the same thing with location. Um, you can do map default or custom configuration. If you do custom configuration, you can zoom out as far as you want, or you can zoom in as far as it'll let you. Um, one thing that Gary taught a lot of people, it's on the portal. Um, it's gonna be right down here. It's how to georeference historical maps. I got a couple of those in the story map. Um, here is where they first started out. And then here's another that I georeferenced. These are all in the portal. You're gonna be able to find them in the Great Lakes group. Um, here um, I put a birth record. You can click on it and it'll expand out to you. And that's from Family Search. Um, credits to where I find things at the end of the slide or even at the end of the story itself. Um, here's something cool you can do. Um, you can go into edit and stay on side panel. Um, this is a story action. So what I did was I highlighted what I wanted to highlight. Then I put the story action. It'll ask me what where I want to go. Um, I'll show you how I made it work. I put the Gregoire family moved roughly 17 miles south to St. Valentin. Um, click it and it's going to take me to where I wanted it to go. So that's cool. <laughs> but um, here is where we get out of Canada and into the United States. You can see all my pop-ups out here. Um, you can click on them. I'm going to tell you throughout the story, um, click locations on the map. Even in the pop-ups, um, I'm sure it was talked about before, but you can put your own pictures. You can put a description, your title, um, so people can really follow along and you don't have to put too much text over here to where you think that your story is going to be overwhelmed. Yeah, I got that pop up and I got the Norwich mine. Really cool pictures. And for those of you that were at the last training session that I presented at, um, this was the slide I decided to show you because this has the most going on. Um, I talked about the pop ups. You can put more than one photo in your pop up. For example, this pop up is for St. Joseph's Church. Um, I have it where it is in present day. This is the original church that is no longer there. This is the church that's there today. You can go between pop-ups. Um, one thing that is unique about this is these are the Sanborn maps that we have been using for the Q&A time traveler. 
and I was able to upload them to my story map. Um, the maps were what tripped me up the most about doing the story and I spent all summer trying to figure out how to do it. So I'm gonna do everyone a favor and pull it up because it'll let you pull it up right in your story map when you're editing. And um, here are all the maps I have throughout the story. What I was doing during the summer is that I would make separate maps for each slide when really you only need one map and you are one map like this and you're gonna put in all of the maps that you want for your whole story map instead of just doing individual ones. Take it from me, don't do that. Uh, like for example, these are the q and time traveler maps right here. Um, so if I just unclick it, they're gone. If I don't want this to show up, it's gone. Discarding and save changes. Yep, I don't want to mess it up. I like my story the way it is right now. And as I said before, um, I had it zoom in to where I want it to go. How I did that was location, custom configuration, zoom in, zoom out, zoom out. And you can save the map location. And if I wanted to zoom out like this and I save the map location, this is exactly how it would look when I'm going through my story map. And I was able to put a lot of cool pictures on my side panel right here to do that. Just the little camera icon right here and you can put your pictures in there. And you can also put links in here. And instead of having maps, which are cool and I like to do, but instead of having maps, you could put an image in there. Um, also at the end, at my credit slide, I have um, our website right here. So instead of doing a map or an image, you can actually put a web page that you want to show up. Here I am acknowledging the funding. Um, here is my content. This is where I have my story map saved. Um, I realize that folders are really just for you, how you want to be able to find your things. Uh, this is a story map. Uh, this is the picture of um, the blue house that was on my first slide. Um, these are some of the records that may show up in my map. Um, like, uh, Here it is, Joseph Gregoire, Jr. birth slash baptism record. This is what I had right here. That's how I was able to get it to show up. And really where I got most of my information from the map, um, on the left-hand portion of the slide is a Clarence Monette. And recently I uploaded the, his full pamphlet that he published on Gregoryville. And you're gonna be able to find it right here. I apologize for the scan, but you can go through, it's not very many pages. Um, the scans didn't, like to show the pictures very well. So along with um, uploading the pamphlet, I um, took pictures separately of um, all the pictures. For example, the racetrack photo didn't show up very well. So I took a picture of myself like that. 
But really that's a quick overview of the story map and how to do things. I think everybody covered things so well that um, you kind of stole my content. <laughs> Thank you, Gary, and everyone that presented. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, does anybody have any questions about story maps or, or anything, anything that they want to see in more detail on that or? I think I just have a quick question. You mentioned earlier that you couldn't, the portal couldn't host the uh, audio and video files. Mm -hmm. I think I saw as Brooke went in the edit mode that you could add videos. Is yes. Uh, so for, for that, in that story map, uh, in, in story maps, you can add videos, but they're, they're not, they're not pulling videos that are hosted from the portal. But if you have link to, uh, say Vimeo or YouTube, uh, so, so it, you can embed the player for that in those pages. Uh, so for instance, if we were to pull up the recording of the, the previous, uh, workshops, uh, we could include that in a story map. Okay. Right, thanks. So does it mean I'm thinking about the, the virtual exhibition? The portal will probably be at least temporarily the house of the uh, of the the support of the uh, the platform for the virtual exhibition. That we won't be able to upload uh, videos uh, directly. It will have to come from the from the mail. Um you you can't up, you can't upload the videos um you just won't be able to view them on the portal um okay. you can so if you um if you embed the link to the youtube video in the story map you can watch it there um but you can just upload it uh as a zip file that people can download it and watch themselves so if you have like an mp4 uh they can do it that way okay. um or or like i uh, for for those videos, I've already I showed earlier that they are um, they're featured on the the landing page of the website, so those would also be included there. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've got about fifteen minutes left. Uh, I think. I can do a, a quick, a relatively quick demo on on some more, uh, in uh, on a couple of more in depth things on on creating story maps, like just uh, how to get started from from nothing, unlike uh, how Brooke already has a bunch of work done. Uh, would if you're interested in seeing that, uh, feel free to stay on the call. But if you are not, I I think now is a good time to. Uh, head out if you if you aren't interested in that. And if uh, if people are going to head out before that, I just want to thank everyone for coming and and attending. And I'm looking forward to seeing what all of you end up uh, uploading to the portal. Uh, I'm sure like seeing seeing all the things Yanko and Brooke are uploading uh, have been uploading, seeing uh, nearly a, two or three dozen other people doing the same thing will be uh, fantastic. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get started here. Okay. So what I'm sharing right now, um, so I just went and found from our uh oh I'm sure you can everyone still hear me? Uh, because it... Yeah, I can hear you, Gary. Okay. Uh, you I think disappeared Zoom... for a moment, but. Okay. Can Can you still see my screen? You're still there. Okay. Zoom like crashed for a second and came back, so I think we're good. Uh, so what we have here is the the map we did from our intermediate demo in Montreal, uh, which we will be running that. Uh, that demo again sometime in the near future. Uh, but for now, we're just going to jump into that. So in order to start a, uh, a story map, it's, it's actually classified on the portal as a, um, as a web app. 
So in order to do that, you can take any of the previous maps that you've already made. Uh, I'm just going to take this one. I'm going to go to its, its page. Uh, and I want to create a web app from that. So we're going to use a template. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do some later demos on using the web app builder and the operations dashboards. Those are really powerful tools, uh, but I think they're a little bit um, uh, farther beyond what, what many of you will be working on uh, in, in the coming future. So there's all of these different templates that you can use to make uh, different web apps, but we are going to be looking at story maps. Uh, so we are going to make a story map journal. There are all these other formats that you can use as well. Uh, I generally tend to use the journal the most because it's uh, it's just the one I like the best. Um, so we're going to create a web app. Uh, this is going to be our, our story map demo. Uh, it's a story map. It's training. Uh, it's uh, uh, we're going to go there. We're going to add our summary. This is um, demo for story maps. Get people started. And we're going to save it in my webinars folder. And we're going to click done. Now, there are a couple of other ways you can get started on that. Uh, you can, as I showed you before from the share screen, you can create a web app from here. Or if you go to your content, you can create it from here. Uh, so there's a ton of different ways that they let you get started with this. Uh, I chose to do it that way because I did it right from the map that I was going to work on. So we, we already know where we are when we get started. Uh, if you notice, so Brooke had her panel, her her side panel was on the left. You can choose to make it so that it it's not it doesn't look like that. You can switch sides. Uh, you can have it so that it's floating across it to give it a more uh, just a different look. Uh, but we're gonna keep it on the side for now. Uh, we're gonna call it our story map demo. Uh, if you are just starting out, you can take a tour of the different things that you can do. So this this just sort of uh, introduces you to the main stage where, where your map content will be or your images and, and videos that you're going to add, your side panel where your text is going to be, uh, a lot of the settings you can change, so your font colors, your, uh, your different uh, themes for your story maps, uh, how you can reorganize your slides. So uh, if you decide you want to switch up the order of your story map, you can do that. Uh, the only thing that you can't change is your title. Your title slide will will be uh, it'll be connected to the top of it, and and you can't move that. So you'll have to, if you decide you want to start it a different way, you'll have to edit that slide uh, instead of just moving it around. Uh, where you can go to make edits. So generally, if you if you're editing something and you see this pencil tool, you can click on that to edit it. Uh, sharing your story map as well, and then they have some some tips that they're going to give you, but we're going to just keep going. So we're going to start. This is the main stage. This is the side panel. Uh, we got our map. We want to use this one. OK, so we have our map. Uh, let's let's make sure that the uh, the starting point is right, though. I think this is a good, uh, a good view. So from where we were starting before, this is the town of Calumet, which is slightly north of Houghton. Uh, and the town of Lorium, both together were uh, mining communities uh, organized around the, the Calumet and Hecla uh, mine. Uh, there was a number of shafts all around here, uh, some here in the in between the two towns. Um, and then as far as the, the different data that we've added in for this demo, uh, the big blue dots are our students from some of the schools that we've mapped. And the, the smaller sort of greenish ones are um, these are mapped from the US Census. Uh, and then you can see sprinkled in there are some red outlines of buildings. Uh, those should be the schools. So we're, we're going to start here. So we're going to keep our, our uh, custom configuration there. So if we wanted to go in and uh, change which layers were visible from here, 
uh, we could we would click on custom map content. So we can turn off the topographical map. We can turn it back on. Uh, we could turn off our students. Uh, we could turn off our, our census data. Uh, or actually, those are students. Uh, this is the census data. There we go. So we're just going to leave it all on for now. But in the future, if you wanted to, uh, between different slides, if you want to highlight different data sets, that's how you would do that. So we're going to save that. And then as Brooke showed you before, you can uh, enable like which, whichever pop-up is going to show by default. So if I wanted to click on this here, uh, I could show uh, this student with their teacher um, and all of that information. And as I mentioned before, we will have a later training to show how to go in and turn off different fields. So like we don't need to be showing anyone looking at our story map uh, which object they're looking at. And that's just an artifact of uh, the, the way shape files store their data. So let's, let's leave that student highlighted. So we're going to save that configuration. So we're going to, we can add some extra text, but I don't think we really want to do that. Let's add a legend. And I think that's good for the main stage there. So we're going to, now we need to go to our, our side panel. Uh, and this is going to be, we are looking at Kermit Johnson. This is uh, in the towns, town of Calumet, Calumet, Michigan, circa 1918. OK, we're just going to add some text there. OK, so we have our, our title slide. We have our, our student highlighted. We have uh, some text about them. And now we want to show something else. Um, so let's, let's go. We're going to add another section. Uh, this is going to be the school. Let's, let's look at the, the school they would have attended. So we're going we're gonna to highlight the school they went to um on this next slide so here is um i believe it was the franklin school yes uh this is the franklin school uh our map uh location we're going to go to custom configuration uh we're going to zoom in Yep, there's the Franklin School. OK. So we want to be able to see our student and our school. <clears throat> so we're going to save the location. So that now on the second slide, it's going to default to this view. Uh, let's keep the content where it is. But I want to be looking at the school instead of the student. So we're going to change the custom or the configuration of the pop up. So we're going to close that. I'm going to open the school. So this is the Franklin School. Uh, we're going to save that configuration. We're going to go to the next part. So, so our text is going to be, this is likely the school. Likely the school Kermit would have attended. Uh, so we're going to add that. OK. so. Just to show how this works, so the the first slide is going to show our whole our whole overview. It's going to show our student, and then we would go from there to the next one. It's going to show their school and some text about it, and uh, from there we could we could show uh, a number of other students uh, and sort of looking at uh, how they might have journeyed to school. So. You can you can really start to get an idea of the types of different things you could be showing with these story maps. Um, I know uh, other other students who work at the lab have have done story maps doing very similar things like this in the past, um, which I think we showed off at the uh, September meeting last year. I think that would have been Rose and Don's story map. Um, 
but I think that's really all we have time for today. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, Brooke covered adding images. Um, oh, let's let's make sure we we save it to start, and then every anytime you're you're doing something, you want to make sure that you're you're sharing it uh, to your different uh, groups. So whether whether you're sharing it with the whole organization, whether you're keeping it private, or if you want it to be public. So are there are there any questions on story maps? Uh, is there anything specific anyone wants to see? OK. Um, well, if there aren't any other uh, questions about anything else on the portal, uh, if you can, if you have any right now, feel free to ask. Uh, if you think of anything later, feel free to email myself or Ryan or or any of the rest of us. We uh, our our emails should be uh, available. We also have um, I will post our facility email in the chat. Stop sharing. Thank you very much, uh, Gary, Brooke, and uh, Ryan, and also Don. Uh, as usual, it has been very useful for me. At least it refreshed my memory because I have not been uploading, uh, downloading anything, on uploading anything on the portal. So uh, thank you very much. Maybe I should say that I, this is something that I have not, we have not talked about with. Uh, with Mark, but I don't think that at this point we want anything public coming from uh, the portal that would go public, that would go to the whole world. So I'm not sure if there is a what what needs to be done to make sure that someone doesn't do it by mistake, for instance. And well, but certainly this is the feeling I have now. But uh, we'll have the chance to uh, I'll have the chance to talk about that with Don uh, when he when he gets uh, when he gets better. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, everyone, who have been there. Uh, bonne fin de semaine. Have a good weekend. Bye, tout le monde.